Shalom. This week's parasha is filled with tragic stories. Stories depicting the future of Yaakov's family, the fights between the brothers, the fight ending with selling Yosef down to slavery, the inner fights or inner trials and tribulations of Judah, Yehuda, the son soon to be Becho. What's interesting about the parasha is that we see these stories not just from the perspective of the people it's happening to, Yosef and his brothers, Yehuda and his wife, but rather also from the perspective of Yaakov. What do these occurrences do to the old father? The one whose sons are bickering between them. How does he deal with the bickering? How does he deal with the slave, the, the son that suddenly disappeared? How his life has changed? This is unique on the... If we look at the other week's parashot, the other stories we've heard before, we didn't really relate back to the older generation once a newer generation came on stage. Once Yaakov and Nisav are fighting, we don't really hear how this relates so much to Yitzchak. Or we don't relate back the story of Lavan and Yitzchak back to Rivka and Lavan and Yaakov back to Rivka and Yitzchak. Every generation has its own story, its own narrative. And in this generation, the narrative relates back to Yaakov as well. It tells us what Yaakov, the patriarch, is feeling, what's happening to his children. The Midrash depicts this in a very interesting way. It says on the Pasuk, Vayeshev Yaakov Be'eretz Megurei Aviv, Yaakov dwelled in the land of his fathers, that he wanted to dwell peacefully. He had a life filled with anxieties, filled with trials and tribulations, and he wanted to rest in his old age, a little pension, sit down, and raise his flock quietly. Says the Satan, the evil one, the other, says, you want to rest now? It's not enough to you that you'll rest in the world to come, you want to rest in this world as well? He sent them the trial of Yosef. The way the Midrash depicts it is Satan, Satan, is not happy with the tzaddikim. He's trying the whole time to irk them, to, ch- to mess them up, to put obstacles in their way, simply because he likes to be annoying. And he realizes that the people he's dealing with are tzaddikim, he realizes that their future is a calm one, he doesn't want the present to be calm, and hence ya- Yaakov, although he deserved a easy pension after his lifelong battle with Esav and Lavan, story of Shechem and Dina, his daughter, he wants to rest, says the Satan, no, I'll send you another obstacle. Interestingly, Rashi, when he quotes this Midrash, Rashi says something different. Rashi says it's not the Satan who's doing this, but rather God himself. God says, is it not enough for you, Yaakov, your future, your calm future in the world to come? You want a calm present? I will send you the story of Yosef. It's not Satan trying to irk Yaakov, but rather God trying to challenge Yaakov. I think Rashi is changing our perspective on life in general. Rashi is telling us, when you have a hardship coming along in life, you can view it as a hardship that Nebuch you have to deal with, something unfortunate that happened to you, work of Satan. And Rashi is saying, no, don't view hardships as work of Satan, rather view it as a challenge of God. Even a tragic story like the story of Yosef is a way for Yaakov to continue growing. This world, the world we live in, unlike the world to come after we pass on, is a world where we can change. The world that we can view our challenges and rise to them. A world that we're not supposed to stay static. A world that we have to continue to grow. And the difference between this world and the world to come is the world to come there's no long change. We, we're static We've earned what we've, we've earned what we could, and no longer can we earn any more. God is putting not obstacles in our ways, but opportunities in our ways. Even something that's very difficult, like the story of Yosef and his brothers, is a way for Yaakov to ask himself, "What should I do now? How can I continue growing?" And Rashi is taking the obstacles of Satan and turn, turning it into the challenges of God. And Yaakov is being taught a lesson, and with him so are we, says Rashi that anything that happens to us throughout our life is an opportunity, not an obstacle. Shabbat Shalom.